going down. So I saw off this morning setting, filling out an application for my student loan. I got an email for a deck, so I'm gonna go quote that now. Up there, just a normal standard 10 by 10. Hi, Dad. So she got the standard quote. Cool lady, fucks a lot though, and her dog is amazing. Same shadow, he's a show dog, he's a perfect dog in the whole wide world. Trash day was like three days ago, my neighbors still haven't taken them in. They're never outside, they've never spoken to each other since they moved in, and they turned off the water in the backyard for me, so I can't wash my brushes back there. Some people, whatever. All right, so in about 10 days, I'm going with three other friends to Colorado to climb a few mountains. And one thing I really want to be able to do is do a double backflip with Steven at the summit of Mount Elbert, the highest peak in Colorado, and the second highest in the continental United States. But the problem is I don't know how to do a backflip. I've wanted to learn for a really long time, but I've never actually tried it outside of trampoline before, and that was even a struggle. So I'm just gonna get changed real quick. And I gotta rearrange the room a little bit, and then I'm just, I watched a couple of videos, so I'm basically an expert now, and I'm gonna give it a shot. So the idea is that I jump from here back onto that area-ish, and everything should be good and padded and kind of safe. But my only concern is these. I don't think the ceiling is high enough. I can reach up and almost touch it, but yeah, so I'm just gonna put shoes on and hope for the best and hope I don't break my ankle as I did my hand, kind of. Here we go. One pair of pants later. All right, oh, man, that's bright. It's now 10.25. I'm at the gym, and I switched location because I really felt like I was just gonna kick the ceiling if I tried doing back in my house. So I'm here, I just got done biking for 20 minutes, I'm stretched out, moved up, loosened up. I'm gonna lay some mats down around here, and then give it a go. What else we got in here? Ooh, these might do. Nah, they're too thin. We'll just keep stacking these up. All right, this is a little mat I set up here. We doubled up in the middle. Got a little launch pad over there. I guess, I guess the only thing left is to give it a shot. So I know I didn't actually try anything there. I saw this, one of the videos I watched. He said to do like power rolls and stuff just to get a feel for it. I can't see where I'm going with this light in my face. So I started out with just one of those. And if you saw the video uh, yesterday or two days ago, I talked about how my wrist is no good. Like this is all I got out of it. Oh my God. And I used this hand to catch myself on the back roll. And now it's killing. I didn't even try anything yet, but I'm gonna switch to the other side and just go for a little bit, but I'm gonna be a little bit careful because if I get injured with my wrist or anything, like actually bad and I can't stand it anymore, I'm gonna be in really bad shape because that's really like my only serious source of income right now. And I need that to get through college. So I don't know if I flip through, I did wear the shirt or not, quit when you're dead. May not be a good idea, but woo, we'll, we'll keep pushing. Normally, if I was like a normal scared of doing a flip, I'd just go for it. But the thing is if I like, if I start rotating and I'm not going all the way and try to catch myself out of like a reflex, then I'm gonna, I will use this hand because it's like out of instinct. And I'll be in bad shape because I, like, I need to not get hurt so I can keep standing. <sighs> what decision, decisions. So this isn't normally how I do things, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it there. Just, I gotta play it safe this time. The wrist is not happy about that. Like, 
That's all I got that way. And then, like this guy, completely fine, but it's not happening. I need this, so I'm gonna call it there. Short video, but to give a little bit of value, I'm gonna show a couple old clips I have from when I like took a two week break or whatever. I think it's only like two clips, but regardless, here they are, right after I quit talking. So I'm gonna end it now, so thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. So these are all the old flyers, all the bad ones are not passing out. It sucks because we took all the time to fold all these and bag all of them. It's probably like a hundred left or so, but they're bad, so sorry fellas. Mm. Sorry Steve. Steve helped me fold all those and we just threw most of them away. But that's what happens, gotta move on to the next thing. The new flyers are much, much better. And hopefully, they are much more successful than the old ones were. So if you back up about three or four years ago, back when I was a wee lad trying to make a name for myself in Cedar Rapids here, I pulled up to this store, Signs Etc. Because I saw their big sign here uh, across from the interstate. And I asked them to make me a couple yard signs. And I, I really had no idea what to expect. I didn't know how much it cost. But they are about 40 bucks a pop, but they gave them to me for 20 bucks each because the owner liked me because I was, I think I was 16 or 17. Tried to start my own business and he thought that was really cool. And so he made me these signs. Mm. And I had no idea how amazing it was that he just fully designed these himself. I mean, nothing elaborate, but I gave him nothing to work with either. So that was way back when my all the, all the calls went through my mom first before they talked to me, because I was so young and she just wanted to like protect me and everything. But now everything goes through just me. So I'm gonna see if they still have this design on file. If not, if we can just make a new one and try to get a couple new signs made with my with my number on it instead of my mom's. Hello. How are you? Not too bad, what's up? Awesome. So I was here maybe like three or four years ago and I got these signs made and I was wondering if I could just get something similar done just with a different phone number by chance. Let me see how we did that. This was printed. Okay. Oh, he didn't recognize me. I was hoping he would, but that's all right. I was just a wee lad, it was three or four years ago, and now I'm all old and handsome. All right, I wasn't gonna vlog for a while, so I got back from Chicago. I think it's important to get this on record. So, today's the second day of staining Apocalypse. I stained two decks in the fence yesterday. I'm doing this deck, and then another one later today. And then tomorrow I'm doing one and a half decks, so like a full deck and then just a floor. I slept wrong on my hand a while ago, and it's just like, this is all the range of motion I have. Staining is more a pain than usual, but I'm also staining, was it six and a half decks in three days, which is a new record. So now you're polishing this deck, which is an insane transformation, but as I was polishing, I got a call from one of my old clients from earlier this summer. Uh, this deck maybe a month or so ago. And he goes, hey, this, uh, this is Mike. Uh, he worked on my deck earlier this summer. Just give me a call back when you get a chance to give me his number. It's like, is there something wrong with the deck? There's no way, I just did it like a month ago. But I took a picture of his deck with my drone and he had a question about that because it's like that or someone has it and having trouble with it. So I was super relieved because I felt like, there's no way, I'm, I like have to redo his deck now, there's no way, I'm gonna have time. But everything worked out, so that's cool. Funny story though.